demands on our attentional resources that we experience in modern day life, I'm sure that all of us know what it's like to be mentally fatigued. Now, directed attention is the type of attention that we use whenever we have to voluntarily focus our effort on a task. Now, we can think of many examples of how this occurs in modern day life, but the, the main thing that we have to understand is that this type of attention is used usually whenever we have to focus on something that's important, but not necessarily interesting. So whenever we have to uh, ignore uh, distractions in the environment, or whenever we want to uh, withhold a behavior that we'd rather do. So when sitting down to work on an assignment, I'm sure that many of us would rather be, you know, thinking of something to eat or wanting to go hang out with friends, but we can't. Instead, we have to sit there and, and work on something that is not necessarily going to capture our attention. And so we have to essentially force ourselves to, to work on it for prolonged periods of time. Now, most of the time we do this with, uh, with relative ease. It's only after we've been working on something for a prolonged period of time, or if there's a lot of other demands on our attention from the environment or from other things that we're thinking about, that we start to notice problems. So these problems occur when our capacity to direct our attention voluntarily becomes fatigued. And once it's become fatigued, there's not much we can do about it until we have enough time, enough mental space to restore our attentional uh, capacity. And so that's essentially what this module is about. It's about the restorative potential of the environment. Now, most researchers have looked at the restorative potential of natural environments and they, in fact, uh, tend to believe that the built environment, that urban environments, are actually not restorative. They're typically seen as detrimental because of all the demands that they, they naturally contain. So walking around cities, there's lots of cars and people and advertising and all of that taxes our cognitive resources. However, there are, as we'll see, features within the urban and built environments that can indeed contribute to an experience of restoration. And so we're not going to exclude that from our, from our understanding. So in a moment, we'll just take a look around a, a couple of natural settings on a walk in Rose Bay along the Heritage Walk that explore some of the elements of a restorative natural environment. Then we'll have a quick look at what elements of the built environment might be restorative as well. It's not hard to see why researchers have focused on the natural environment for the potential restorative effects that it may have. Because there's so many opportunities for mystery and a sense of engagement with the environment as well as all the inherent features that effortlessly capture our attention. Like the moss on the rocks, the dappled sunlight through the leaves, the shadows on the ground. You can hear the bird song and the waves lapping in the background. And what you can't experience is, or through this video, are the smells and the, the temperature and the, the atmosphere of being within a completely different setting than one that would usually contribute to fatigue. And a little further on, we come to a beautiful secluded beach that once again demonstrates the scope of the natural environment and the many things that we can engage with and that automatically hold our attention and even offer us things to do within the environment. So once again, we can see all of the many inherent properties within the natural environment that engage our attention and interest and therefore provide a time for which we can restore our attention. And now, at the end of our walk, we come to a bench overlooking the harbour. We can sit for a moment and reflect on our experience. 
as we do, we gaze out on the horizon and we see the CBD obviously there in the background. Now the question we can ask ourselves is, can this built environment be restorative? Now while we're amongst it all, if we're in the energy and the bustle of the city, and we're trying to focus on a task that we want to do, then probably not. We're probably going to be so overwhelmed with things that are clamouring for our attention that it will be very difficult to experience restorative effects. But sitting here from a distance, gazing at it all, watching it all go by, we can quite easily allow ourselves to become absorbed in the experience and simply to feel the, the fascination, the effortless way that our attention is grabbed by the background. Those features, just as much as the natural ones, allow our attention to wander over the landscape. Provides interesting and fascinating content for our mind to focus on. But without the need for us to consciously, effortfully direct our attention. So ultimately, the concept of restoration is within ourselves. If we have the ability to let go and simply be within the environment, then pretty much any environment can be restorative. But if we're faced with many competing tasks and have many demands that require our attention, then it can be very difficult, whatever sitting we're in, to experience restoration. And so, the three questions that we're going to address in this module are firstly, what is directed attention and how does it become fatigued? What does that do to us? And secondly, we're going to explore the question of what is attentional restoration theory? And what sort of environments can be restorative? And then finally, we're going to look at the question of whether we can experience restoration independently from the environment.